It's always been a dream to run a Microsoft Flight Simulator at high resolution with buttery smooth frame rays, but the sim is a beast bringing even the most powerful PCs to their knees, although that's now changed with the latest Nvidia graphics cards. Here you can see me playing a Microsoft Flight Simulator on my RTX 3080. Recently Nvidia got in touch with me and asked if I'd like to try Microsoft Flight Simulator out on an RTX 4090, so thanks to Nvidia for sending this card out. We're going to see in this video just how well it performs. You may have also noticed we're using the Flight Recorder app here to ensure we have the exact same flight path on both graphics cards. Straight off the bat then, you'll notice there's not a huge amount of difference between frame rates on the RTX 3080 and the 4090, with the 4090 gaining around 10 frames per second extra. Now, anyone who's used Microsoft Flight Simulator for any length of time will be well aware that the sim is extremely CPU limited, and this really does often hold back the frame rates. This then is where we really get to test the new 4090. The 4000 series graphics card come with DLSS 3 support, which allows the graphics card to use AI to create additional frames. We'll talk about the specifics of that in just a moment. So with frame generation on, you can see the in-game frame counter can only count the frames created by the sim itself. So we'll need another FPS counter to count those additional frames created by the card. For this, we're using MSI Afterburner. And immediately, you can see the massive improvement, the massive boost that the frame generation technology is actually having on the sim. Now I'm going to jump back into the menu here. And incidentally, the sim isn't pausing in this menu because I'm using that flight recorder, which continues to play back the flight no matter what. But so you know, there's no trickery going on here. I've disabled a frame rate generation and you can see that both MSI Afterburner and the in sim frame rate counter are given more or less the same numbers there. Let's go and switch uh, frame generation back on. So as you will have noticed for this flight, we've used high-end graphic settings at 4K, both on the RTX 3080 as well as the RTX 4090. As you can see there, now we're consistently hitting over 140 frames per second with just a few drops here and there. Now, you may be wondering about the same flight in ultra settings, so let's have a quick look at that. Here you can see the setting I've used. We've got a DLSS switch to quality and frame generation on, everything else set to default ultra settings, running at a resolution of 4K. The same flight path again, and you can see yet again, we are over 100 frames a second. In fact, I don't think it ever actually drops below 100 frames a second whilst flying over New York. But whilst New York is certainly challenging, it's far from the most challenging location in the game. So for that, we're going to head to Kennedy International and take off using an airliner. Again, running at 4K using ultra settings. And we've got frame rate generation off here, so you can just see the normal frame rates whilst using DLSS 2. And as you can see, we're getting around 35 to 36 frames a second, mid 30s. Very, very challenging location due to the demands that this sim places on the CPU in this type of environment. Turning on frame generation then, let's see how that improves. And immediately, you can see we've almost doubled our frame rate, hitting a consistent 60 plus frames per second. Now, as I was playing through on the sim here, doing various flights, one thing I was really curious about is whether or not frame generation would have a negative impact on the visual quality. You may have noticed on other videos out there, specifically from places such as Digital Foundry, that on certain games such as Spider-Man, there are some artifacts uh, in creeping in here and there, at least for people who tend to pixel peep. Not something I really do myself, and certainly not something I do on regular day-to-day -day usage. But for the purposes of this video, let's do the full thing. So we got the camera panning around pretty fast here just to get a bit of action. We're going to slow things down by 50% and then zoom in. So what you'll notice is pretty much the same thing that other channels have noticed, that there is a little bit of ghosting around certain areas of the plane. Specifically here, you can see it on the left undercarriage wheel there, as well as the left wing, and a little bit on the engine as well. Let's just have a look at that again. Now personally, I don't see this as a problem, at least not when it comes to a Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'll show you why. At regular speed and regular magnification, it really isn't noticeable. At least not to my eyes. What I'm seeing here is fantastic graphics, great resolution, and really amazing frame rates. So this ghost in and artifacting certainly doesn't bother me in any way whatsoever. 
but I thought it important to include all the details and all the relevant facts that I've noticed in this video. So all in all, very, very smooth, very impressive. Although that said, there is the occasional drop here, the occasional micro stutter that you may notice. A bit more uh, rapid camera swing in there, and I think we're good. I think you'll get the uh, feel for how things play out. So with that done, let's move on and look at some of the stunning scenery within Microsoft Flight Simulator, various cities around the world and some truly beautiful locations as we talk about the performance with the 4090. Here, we're flying over Tokyo, a lovely, a lovely city. And you can see the frame rate's still very, very good here, over 120 frames per second. One thing that you may have also noticed is the power draw from the GPU. Now, here's something I was actually concerned about. I thought it may end up drawing 400 watts plus, but it seems not to really draw more than 290 to 310 watts, 312 watts right there. Seems to be the constant power supply, although the GPU you can see is only running around about 80% here. So GPU usage will vary depending on location, sometimes around 80%, sometimes close to 100. Here, we're moving on to Rio de Janeiro. Now, keeping with the subject of power draw and power supply at the moment, I have used uh, numerous other games on this with the graphics card, and of course, GPU usage does reach around 100%, but it's never been a problem with my PSU. I'm using a Corsair RM850X, so this isn't using the ATX3 type power supplies, where you're still on uh, the older power supplies, but I haven't had any problems with this, despite using it pretty hard and pretty extensively for two weeks now. Okay, so as I said earlier on in the video, I talk briefly about frame generation technology and the LSS3. Now, if you want an in-depth analysis on those techs, I'd highly recommend some of the videos are linked in the video description, where they'll give you a greater tech breakdown of how it all works. DLSS3 then, and frame generation is a new technology from NVIDIA and currently only works on the RTX 4000 series graphics cards. So the uh, 4090, 4080 and the 4070 Ti. Very likely it'll work on future releases of the same series of graphics card as well. Essentially then, the basics of how it works, at least as I understand it, is that the AI takes two frames, the first frame and the second frame, and then creates a third frame that it inserts in between. This, to me, feels a little bit like magic. It's an artificial frame not created by the game engine as such, but rather created by AI and deep learning. It really feels like something that couldn't possibly work, yet the results speak for themselves. Right here in Microsoft Flight Simulator, the graphics quality is absolutely stunning. Flying around in 4K, everything set to ultra, couldn't really ask for better. And the frame rates look really, really nice. In fact, more than nice. Who would have thought that we'd be flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator at 120 frames per second at 4K, and in some cases, 150 frames per second. It is worth mentioning here that frame generation technology isn't perfect. You'll notice that if you've watched any other YouTubers Again, Digital Foundry is one I'd recommend, where they notice some artifacting in uh, the frame generation technology. But again, from what I can tell, this doesn't seem to be obvious in those games, and it certainly seems to only be apparent to people who pixel peep. That said, it's not anything I've noticed whatsoever in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Best I can tell, it seems to be entirely free of those type of glitches. I suspect, in part, that may be due to the slower pace of the flight sim and, well, we don't exactly have a fast camera movement here or a rapid action. So yeah, for me, the bottom line is that DLSS 3 frame generation is seriously impressive. Just look at these absolutely amazing frame rates here. Now, moving on to another subject, it's impossible to talk about the RTX 4090 without also talking about price. There's no getting away from it, the graphics card is insanely expensive. In fact, as you go back over the years, you can see that NVIDIA's top-line graphics cards have increased in price dramatically over the years, and this will really give people pause for consideration as to value. Now, when it comes to value, long-time viewers of this channel will know that my take on value is that the concept is very much subjective. It's the reason I will never recommend things one way or another based purely on price alone. And my reason for that specific take, that particular take, is that everyone's feelings on this is very different, so it's hard for me to make a judgement call uh, to really recommend it on what other people may or may not be feeling. For example, some people prefer to play cheap or free-to-play games, 
Whilst on the other end of the spectrum, some of Plasimers invest huge vast amounts of money, both into The Sims itself and their expansions and uh, DLC and marketplace add-ons, as well as their very, very hefty and expensive setups, their flying rigs. So yeah, everyone's going to have a different take on the price of the RTX 4090. My personal opinion is that it's very expensive. But other people, if they really, really want it and have the cash for it, are possibly not going to be too concerned one way or the other. Ultimately, some people are going to have very strong feelings on this, which is understandable, and other people may well be entirely indifferent to it. Now, another topic people may be wondering about is the subject of latency. This is a subject that has cropped up with more action-based rapid games. The fact is that adding in additional frames in between the real frames does add some latency into the game. And for some people, they've noticed this affects input latency, at least in certain games. It doesn't seem to affect Microsoft Flight Simulator though, at least not to me, in any noticeable way. In fact, for me, the opposite is true. The additional frame rate has created a level of smoothness that just makes the whole sim feel that much more responsive. It gives the illusion to me that well, latency is that much improved. Either way, you'd have to get down into the nitty gritty and get some real tools into this to really notice any difference. And if that's a subject that does interest you, again, do check out those links in the video description. As far as I can tell though, there's no issues here whatsoever with this sim. And I suspect it's very unlikely that anyone else is going to notice anything problematic, at least when it comes to a Microsoft Flight Simulator. So, after using the RTX 4090 now for two weeks with Microsoft Flight Simulator, what are my final thoughts so far? Well, I've got to say, I'm seriously, seriously impressed. Way more impressed than I actually thought I would be. When I first saw the announcements for DLSS 3, I wondered whether or not well, it was just a PR marketing and whether or not it would actually be possible to pull off these types of frame rate boosts. Well, it turns out that it may well have been PR and marketing, but it's also turned out it's very accurate as well. You can indeed get almost double your frame rates and in some cases, sometimes more. But of course, many people are going to have the question, just how many frames do you need? Well, this will depend on your use cases. For me, as a YouTuber and content creator, I like to have the most power on hand that I can possibly have. That way I can create the best looking visual videos for you. It means that you know whenever you watch a YouTube video created by me that the visuals are going to be very very good. We're going to have ultra settings on everything, a high resolution and some very very smooth frame rates. Other use cases here are going to be the ability to lock in 60 frames per second. Now if you want 60 frames per second you can cap the frame rate there and you know no matter what that flight simulator with frame generation on is never going to drop below that you can throw absolutely anything you want at that and well you're pretty much not going to go below that of course you may be a bit like me and like to get as many frames as you can no matter what personally i like 60 frames per second as an absolute minimum and if we can get 120 frames per second or more then so much the better but of course that will be dependent on your display so for that you'll need to be running a 120 hertz or even a 144 hertz monitor of course i could get even better performance if i swapped out my cpu for a slightly better one maybe one of the new amd ryzen's or an even a new intel but that said i think the frame rates we get in here is more than enough at least for me if you've got the setup for it then the RTX 4090 is an absolutely fantastic piece of kit. Amazing performance there, but unfortunately very expensive. But if you want the absolute maximum frame rates and performance you can absolutely get, then this is going to be the best option. For me, I've never seen a Microsoft Flight Simulator look so good or run so smoothly. So yeah, gone are the days where I'm struggling to get that smooth, high quality footage at a minimum of 60 frames per second. So do check out those links in the video description where you can find out some additional information and some additional opinions on the graphics card. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.